This lecture addresses the roles of stakeholders in adaptive management. Stakeholders are a key element to the successful implementation of adaptive management. They play important roles in the process by assisting in the design of each adaptive management component, assisting in integrating the components, providing periodic review and adjustments of management actions, and offering legitimacy and robustness of the adaptive management process by protecting against the bubble syndrome, that is, infusing new ideas and creative alternatives and supporting the defensibility of the adaptive management process. Including stakeholders increases the representation of a variety of values on your project team and shows an attempt was made to be fair and equitable. Stakeholder involvement builds support and nurture for the long haul. Stakeholders become vested in the project, increasing their ownership of the process. Stakeholder involvement creates strong champions of the process. It avoids creating powerful adversaries, greatly increases transparency, and increases a higher level of buy-in needed for the long haul of the project. In some cases, stakeholder involvement is a legal or policy requirement. This may be as a result of a court decision, a specific environmental regulation, or an agency requirement. The pool of stakeholders may be diverse or limited, depending on the specifics of the environmental management project. For example, a stakeholder may include anyone willing to stand around discussing your management problems in bad weather. Stakeholders can consist of entities at any scale, for example, individuals, organizations, constituencies such as the public. Stakeholders include individuals that have varying interactions with the resource or natural environment, including environmental managers, researchers, administrators, policy makers, user groups, or special interest groups. But to be a stakeholder, they must have an interest or influence in the process or outcome. You may call this the dog in the fight test. So, for example, a stakeholder must be someone who, by interest or affiliation, is directly impacted by the outcome of the project. They must have a dog in the fight. The public may well have an interest in the outcome, but are they directly affected? If the answer is yes, then you need to identify a way for them to be represented in your stakeholder group. At times, the answer will be no. When the public is considered a stakeholder group, sometimes this can be done with a representative community member, a church pastor, or well-respected business persons, for example. Likewise, the business community may be represented by the Chamber of Commerce or a business leader. The question then becomes when to exclude someone as a stakeholder. It is always difficult to limit the number in a stakeholder group, but it must be done. The stakeholder list should be manageable. You likely need to get everyone together in one place many times in order to make progress on the management plan. It is not a good idea to exclude those with influence over whether and how the decision is executed. For example, politically connected groups or those that by their participation demonstrate that you received broad-based input on a controversial decision. You do not want to limit the stakeholder list simply because the different groups disagree. As an environmental manager, you will be tasked with building trust and collaboration and bringing together conflicting points of view. Think ahead to the final decision. Who would sue you? Make your decision a media event. Call the governor, president, or CEO if they disagree with your decision. Then, consider if it would be advantageous to include them. Stakeholders have several specific roles in the adaptive management process. First, stakeholders are responsible for problem bounding, which includes defining, clarifying, and illuminating the problem at hand. All decision problems occur in a context of real-world complexities. Stakeholders help you find the right compromise between acknowledging the real world and keeping the problem tractable. Second, stakeholders play a role in developing objectives. They must work cooperatively to provide a common, measurable objective of management. They translate their personal values into measurable quantities. As a result, you may have to resolve among multiple competing objectives. Use of a mediator or facilitator can be valuable. Objectives are critical because the objectives guide the selection of the decision. Objectives are value statements. 
They reflect social, political, and ecological ideals. They should incorporate both benefits and costs. Each objective should be assigned a value by stakeholders. For example, for each outcome, the group must assign a numeric value as to its desirability. Third, stakeholders play a role in developing decision alternatives. The outcomes of these alternatives, alternative actions, should be distinguishable from each other, not merely a series of tweaked alternatives, but a full range of well-defined actions. Fourth, stakeholders play a role in framing the scientific uncertainty of the environmental management problem. The stakeholder group may vigorously dispute their understanding of environmental or biological processes or data. Stakeholders can frame this uncertainty by contributing or advocating for competing models of the system. For example, two actions that are in direct opposition could be crafted into a mathematical model that predicts outcomes or by identifying a specific research need to help lessen the uncertainty. One critical aspect of framing the scientific uncertainty in adaptive management is the separation between disputes about science and disputes over values. A debate over the science can often be used as a diversionary tactic to hide a difference in values. Here is an example. A comment is received that boat traffic in nursery areas must be decreased to protect whales. The response among the stakeholders comes as, we want to save the whales too, but the real problem is poor water quality. The question is, is this a dispute over the science, or are there hidden interests within the stakeholder group? Fifth, stakeholders play a role in providing periodic evaluation of the decision process. All components of the adaptive management process are subject to reevaluation. Stakeholders must be engaged in this reevaluation process to refine the statement of objectives, if needed, to add or remove decision alternatives, and to alter, change, or add models or research needs. <coughs> in summary, stakeholders play critical roles in the adaptive management process. Stakeholders are involved in problem scoping objectives, decision alternatives, models, and reevaluation. The process enriched by inclusion of invested, conscientious stakeholders. A structured adaptive manage management approach is a safeguard against behaviors or insincere or ill-informed stakeholders. Stakeholders can contribute in diverse areas, for example, technological and social dimensions of adaptive management. In conclusion, Adaptive management works best as a fully participatory process. The following reference was used for a photo in developing this lecture.